exactly is a permutation? Well, a permutation is essentially an ordering of objects or items or letters. It's an ordering. So when we talk about a permutation, let's look at an example. Say, for example, we take the word cat. You can see there's three letters in the word cat. We want to see how many different ways could we rearrange these three letters to make essentially a new word using all three letters. So let's take a look at that. You can see that you could write this as, uh, of course, C-A-T. We could also say C-T-A. We could say A-T-C, A-C-T, T-A-C, and T-C-A. So you can see there's actually six different ways of writing this uh, word using all three letters in the word cat. So there's six permutations or orderings. Now there's another way to do this. When you're taking uh, three items, okay, and you're wanting to see how many different ways you can order them, you can use this formula here, which is n factorial. Now the way the factorial works is you start at this number here. In this case, we're working with three letters. That's going to be three factorial. And you take that number three and you multiply uh, down to one. So this is going to be equal to six, three times two times one. And you can see there was six different permutations or orderings. Now, w another way to look at this is oftentimes this is referred to as the fundamental counting principle or the multiplication counting principle. And basically what you're doing is you're saying for each category here, each letter, how many choices are there? Well, there's three choices for the first letter, okay, in your word. But once you use that letter, now there's only going to be two choices for that second letter. And then once you use up those two, there's only going to be one left for the third. So it's three times two times one. Sometimes what your teacher will do to illustrate this is to have you draw a tree diagram. And so I'll just show you that real quick. So for the first letter, you could choose a C, A, or a T. Once you choose C, you've got two choices. You could choose A or T. If you choose A, you have two choices. That's going to be C or T. If you choose T, you have two choices. There's going to be C or A. So if you're going down this branch, you can see if you've chosen C, you've chosen A, the only letter left would be T. Or here would be C, T, the only letter left to choose would be A, A, C, T, A, T, C, T, C, A, T, A, C. And again, you can see if you count these roots, so to speak, there's only going to be six uh, outcomes that are possible going down each of these roots. So that's the idea there. Now what happens if you want to take uh, permutations of n objects are at a time. Say, for example, you only wanted to make like a, a two-letter word using these three letters. Well, in walks NPR. So what is NPR? Well, NPR means out of n objects, how many ways are there to pick R of them, okay, where the order is important? And there's a formula you're going to want to memorize, and we'll talk about this in a minute. It's n factorial over n minus R factorial. Okay, so let's do an example. Say we want to make a two-letter word out of the letters in the word cat. So let's just write them out for a minute. So we could have C-A, we could have C-T, we could have, what else? We could have uh, A-C, we could have A-T, we could have T-A, and we could have T-C. So you can see there's a one, two, three, four, five, six possibilities, six ways of making a two-letter word where the order is important. So CA is different from AC. Now we're going to talk about in just a minute combinations where the order is not important and uh, we'll talk about that in just a second. But notice here there's another way to calculus, calculate this instead of writing all these out. We can use the formula. We can say out of three letters, see CA and T, we're going to pick two. Okay, now I'm just using the word pick just as a, a way of thinking about this. Out of three items, you want to say how many ways are there to pick two where the order is important. So using our formula, you can see that n equals 3, r is equal to 2. So this is going to be 3 factorial over 3 minus 2 factorial. Now remember the way the factorials work. You start at this number and you multiply down to 1. 3 minus 2 is 1 factorial. 1 factorial is just going to be 1, so you would get 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6 over 1, which equals six different ways of picking two letters, okay, out of the three letters that we started with to make a word where the order is important. Now, say, for example, the order is not important. So this is when we're going to be talking about combinations. And combinations, you can see that AC, okay, and CA, these are actually the same 
two letters. So for example, if you were gonna pick uh, you know, uh, two items out of a, a bag of three items, it doesn't matter you know, if you pick C first and then A, or A first and then C, because you're gonna end up with those two items anyways, okay? So we would only count this as one result, okay, or one combination. Same thing here, we've got uh, T, A, and A, T, and then we have uh, C, T, and T, C. So you can see we've grouped those together, so there's really only three uh, unique outcomes here, three distinct outcomes. And the way we would do this is we would use our combination formula, it's NCR, and the way this works is it's N factorial over N minus R factorial, R factorial. Now notice how this formula and this formula, they're almost exactly the same, right? The only difference is that we're dividing by this R factorial. And what this means is that we're dividing out the duplicates. We don't wanna count A and C and C and A as the same, so what we're doing is we're, uh, you know, as different, I should say, they're the same, so we wanna double count those, we wanna divide out those multiplicities. So in this particular example, we had three letters, okay, C-A-T, we're choosing two, okay, that's just one way to think about it, you know, out of three, we're choosing two, the order's not important, we just wanna find out how many different outcomes there are, so that's gonna be three factorial over three minus two, which is one factorial uh, times two factorial. If we expand this out, we get three times two times one over one factorial, which is one. Two factorial is two times one. Notice the two and the one, they cancel. Three divided by one is equal to three. And that's what we found out here, that there was actually three uh, groups of those two letters, right? So that's the idea between permutations, combinations. But quickly, I just wanted to go back here for a moment. We were talking about this formula, n factorial. So the n factorial represents, you know, how many ways are to, to arrange all n items. So for example, if we had like a word, say for example, like um, math, right, M-A-T-H, and we say, well, how many ways could we rearrange all of the letters? You can see there's four letters, so we would say that this is four factorial. That's gonna be four times three times two times one, which means there's 24 different ways to use all four letters and rearrange those and make you know, a different so-called word, right? It might not actually be a word, but it'll look like, you know, like a four letters, right, in a different order. Now, another way to do this problem is to use the permutations formula, the NPR. The only difference is we would be saying four P4. So we'd say out of four letters, we're gonna pick four, so basically all of them. And if we use our formula, you can see this is gonna be four factorial over four minus four, zero factorial. So I'm just doing N minus R. But zero factorial, this is one that you're gonna to wanna to memorize. Zero factorial is equal to one. Okay, so you weren't gonna memorize that. So uh, you can see zero factorial is one, so we end up just with four factorial like we had up here, which is 24. So two different ways to do it. You can either use the formula n factorial or you could use the NPR uh, formula. Now, if you take a word like algebra and you wanna find out the number of permutations of all the letters in the word algebra, you can see that there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven letters. So there's gonna be seven factorial ways of you know, rearranging all seven of those letters. But notice how that there's two A's. So when there's uh, multiple letters, you know, there's uh, repetitions, what you wanna do is you wanna divide out those multiplicities. So in this case, because there was two A's, we're dividing by two factorial. Two factorial is just two times one, which is two. And you can see that if I was to, you know, put this A here and this A here, it would still look like the word algebra. So we don't wanna double count that as a distinct, uh, as, a, as a, you know, the same, uh, uh, when we wanna count it as a separate permutation, right? We don't wanna, uh, you know, basically treat that as a different word. It's gonna look like the same words. So we wanna divide out those multiples, right? Take another example like uh, Mississippi, M-I-S-S-I-S-S. I, P, P, I. This one has 11 letters, so there's gonna be 11 factorial ways of rearranging those 11 letters. But notice we've got four S's, so we're gonna divide by four factorial. We've got four I's, we divide by four factorial, and we've got two P's, we're gonna divide by two factorial. And again, all this is doing is it's dividing out those multiples. Now, you don't wanna make the mistake of saying four times four, this is 16 factorial, that's not correct. You have to do these individually, so four factorial, expand this out four times three times two times one. Again, another four times three times two times one times two times one. And just simplify them and then you can divide. And that's gonna be the number of distinct or different or unique, however you wanna say that, permutations of all the letters in the word Mississippi. Let's go into some word problems. See if you can uh, do these along with me here. It says, if there are 10 people on a committee, 
how many ways are there of choosing a president, vice president, and secretary? Now at this point, we're just talking about the number of outcomes. We're gonna get into probability in just a little bit here, but first we wanna find out how many different ways there are of choosing a president, vice president, and secretary out of the 10 people on a committee. Now the th question that you wanna really focus on is, is the order important or is the order not important? Well, if you were to take 10 people and you're gonna basically pick three of them, right? If you change the order of those people, they're gonna have a different job or a different position. So the order is important. So this is gonna be 10 permutation three or 10 P3, or, or sometimes what I say is out of 10, you're picking three where the order matters. Now, if we use our formula here for uh, permutations, you can see this is gonna be 10 factorial over 10 minus three, which is seven factorial. And if we expand this out, it's gonna be 10 times nine times eight times seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, or you could just write that seven factorial over seven factorial, you can see those are canceling, so it's really just gonna be 720 different ways. Now, another way to do this is to use the multiplication counting principle or the fundamental counting principle, and you can see that there's just gonna be 10 ways of choosing a president, right? But once you choose that president, there's only nine people left you know, uh, in this group to choose the vice president, and then once you choose those two people, there's only eight people remaining left to choose the final position, the secretary, and you can then use that multiplication counting principle or that fundamental counting principle and multiply those together, you're gonna to get the same result. A lot of students prefer this method because it's just a kind of an easy way to think about it. You say out of 10, you're picking three where the order matters, but for others, this is a little bit easier. So let's look at number two now. It says if there are 30 people on your tennis team, how many ways can you choose two co-captains? So my question is, do you think that the order is important or do you think the order is not important? Well, in this case, the order, it doesn't matter because if you take you know, uh, this person and this person and you switch them, they're still gonna be the same uh, co-captains. It's not like they're gonna have a different position, like one's the president and one's the vice president. No, they're, basically, they're the same position, so it doesn't matter you know, in what order we choose them. So we're gonna use combinations, so 30 combination two, or you could say out of 30, we're choosing two. I'm gonna use the combination formula up here, which is 30 factorial over 30 minus two factorial, two factorial. So this is gonna be uh, 30 factorial over 28 factorial, two factorial. And again, notice this two factorial, what this is doing is it's dividing out those multiplicities, like A and B, B and A. Those are the same two people that are the co-captains. You don't wanna double count those, so that's why we're dividing those out. So you can see this is gonna be 30 times 29 times 28, 27 all the way down to one, right? So 28 factorial. And here we've got 28 factorial. Notice that those are the same, those are canceling over two times one. And you can see two goes into 30 15 times. So we really just have 15 times 29. And that's gonna be the number of ways that you could choose those two co-captains. So let's look at uh, number three. It says if a board has 10 women and seven men, how many ways can you form a committee uh, that contains four members? Okay, so this is important, four members, such that all four are men. Okay, so what do you think on that one? So all four are men. Well, you can see there's seven men. So out of seven, we're gonna be choosing four. And I'm using the combination, seven combination four, because the order doesn't really matter. It's just a committee. It's not like they have a, you know, president, vice president, or first place, second place, third place. The order's not important. And you can simplify that using the combination formula here. Now, number, letter B, it says two are men and two are women. Well, again, what you do is you take how many there are in that group. There's seven men, but we're choosing two, and there's two that are women. So out of the 10 women, we're choosing two, and we're gonna multiply those together. So we're using that fundamental counting principle. We're basically saying, you know, how many outcomes there are in this group times how many outcomes there are in this group, and we're multiplying them together. Okay, the last one, this one's a little bit more challenging. It says at least one is a woman. So at least one, so at least means one could be a woman, two could be you know women, uh, three, or all four. Now we could do it you know, by individually and add them all up. But another way to do this, when you see this phrase, at least one, you might wanna take notes on this one, at least one, what you do is you take the total minus none. Okay, what does that mean? It sounds a little cryptic, right? Well, the total means how many ways can you find, uh, you know, how many ways can you make a committee of four people out of 17 people? Well, that's gonna be 17 choose four minus the committees that have no women on them. Well, the committees that have no women on them would be 
seven, choose four. That would be out of the seven men you're choosing four. Now, another way that students like to do this too is you could say, well, out of the seven men you're choosing four times out of the 10 women, you're choosing zero. But 10 choose zero is just one, so one times anything is itself. But this is kind of like a little quicker way of doing this problem. Do the total minus no women it would be all the committees that had at least one or two or three or all four on them. Okay, now some examples for, uh, with cards, playing cards. A standard 52 card deck, if you're not familiar, it's pretty easy to understand. There's uh, 52 cards in the deck, half are red and half are black, so 26 red, 26 black, and then it's broken down into what they call suits, four suits. There's 13 diamonds and 13 hearts, these are red, and then there's 13 clubs and 13 spades, these are black, and then there's a king, a queen, and a jack. They call these face cards because they have a face on them, okay, in each of the different suits. And then there's numbered cards, two through 10, in each of the four suits. And then each suit has one ace, okay? So let's go into some examples here. It says, how many ways are there of being dealt a five card hand out of a standard 52 card deck if all of the cards are diamonds? Okay, so we're trying to figure out how many ways you could be dealt all diamonds. Well, the key is, you say, well, how many diamonds are there? There's 13 diamonds, and we're choosing five, or you could say 30, 13 combination five. Now, it doesn't matter which way you're dealt the cards, because you can shuffle them up in your hand once you get them. So that's why we're using the common combinations and not the permutations. So this one's just 13C5. How many ways are there of getting uh, a five-card hand that contains exactly one face card? Okay, so we look at the face cards. You can see that there's three, six, nine, 12 face cards. So that's gonna be 12, choose one. See, exactly one face card. But then the remaining cards, there's 40 cards that are not face cards, because uh, 52 minus 12, which is 40, and we're choosing four. So one way to think about this is the first number is how many is in that group. The second number is how many that you're, you're choosing out of that group. And then you can see here the 12 and the 40 that adds up to 52, the one and the four adds up to our five card hand. The next one, let's say you wanna find out the number of way of, of not getting a queen. So you get five cards in your hand, none of them are queens. Well, let's see, it looks like there's uh, a queen, one, two, three, four queens. So if we take 52 minus four, that's gonna be 48 cards that are not queens and we're choosing five, okay? all our hearts or all our spades. Now in math, when you see the word or, or means a union, it means both. It means like you're combining all these possibilities with all these possibilities, making sure not to double count any. But in this case, you're not gonna get a heart and a spade at the same time. So what's the number of ways of getting all hearts? Well, you can see there's 13 hearts, so that's gonna be 13 choose five, plus how many ways are they getting all spades? Well, there's 13 spades over here, so that's gonna be 13 choose five. Do those separately and then add them together. Okay, how about this last one, at most one club. So at most means that you could have zero clubs or one club. So let's figure out how many ways to get zero clubs. So you can see there's 13 clubs. So let's just say out of the 13 clubs, you're gonna get zero, but out of the 39 remaining cards that are not clubs, you're gonna get five, right? 13 choose zero is just one, so I could have just written 39 choose five. Plus, what's the number of ways of getting one club? Well, out of the 13 clubs, we're choosing one, and the 39 non-clubs, we're choosing four. Notice the one and the four add up to our five card hand. The 13 and 39 add up to 52. Let's transition into probability now. Same standard uh, deck of cards, what is the probability of being dealt all numbered cards? Now, a quick review uh, of probability. Probability is you know, defined as what? the number of successful outcomes, so I'm just gonna write the number of successes, divided by the total possible outcomes. Okay, so another way to think about it very simplistically is, it's you know, how many ways can you get what you want out of the total things that could occur? So it's the number of successes over the total possible, right? So what is the probability of being dealt all numbered cards? Well, you can see the numbered cards are two through 10, two through 10, two through 10. There's, there's nine numbered cards in each suit. Nine times four is 36, and we're gonna choose five of those. But in a 52 card deck, how many ways could you be dealt a five card hand? That's gonna be 52 choose five. So out of 52 cards, how many ways of, their, of you know, being dealt five cards? The order's not important, so we're using combinations again. But our successes are the 36 numbered cards. We wanna choose five out of those. So number of successes divided by the total, that's gonna give you your probability. And this one, what is the probability of getting at least one ace? 
Okay, so the probability of getting at least one ace means that you could have, <clears throat> excuse me, one ace, two ace, three ace, four aces, or five aces, right? That's a lot of uh, you know calculation. So let's go about it a slightly different way. Let's figure out all of the uh, five card hands. That's 52, choose five, minus the ones that have no aces. So when you see at least one, do the total minus none. So in this case, the ones that have no aces, that would be 48 cards that are not aces, because there's just four aces, and we're choosing five, okay? So this would be all the cards that, uh, the five card hands that have at least one or more ace in it, because this is the ones that have none, so total minus none, divided by how many ways can you be dealt a five card hand out of uh, 52 cards, that's 52 choose five. If you simplify that, that's gonna give you your probability. Now, if you have some additional questions about permutations, combinations, factorials, probability, I, I'll put links to some other videos I did in the description of this video, or another option is go ahead and put your question in the comments below and see if you can help one another answering some of those questions. So test yourself you know, by maybe posing a question and also by trying to answer some other students' questions as well. You'll learn a lot from that. Also check out my other videos, like I said, about uh, permutations, combinations, factorials, and probability. Otherwise, subscribe to the channel and I look forward to seeing you in the future videos. I'll talk to you soon.